In the following, I want to present to you the results of the Bachelor thesis of Eric Osterkamp, who worked on how to extend the parametrized Boris Hiller transform. Here we look at a text T and a pattern P, whose characters are drawn from an alphabet sigma. In an occurrence of the pattern in the text, we think about it as a substring in the text that equals to the pattern. And our problem, the pattern matching problem, is to count all occurrences of the pattern in the text, which we also write as t count p. And the goal is not to scan t sequentially for finding these occurrences, but index t for the efficient um, pattern matching. In this example, we have a pattern AB, and we can see down there for this text here, we find p at three positions, and therefore the answer to our query is three. In what follows, we look at an extended version where we look at parameterized strings. So we keep the alphabet here, sigma, as sigma s for the static symbols, also called s symbols. And we define a new alphabet for the parameterized symbols called sigma p for the p symbols. These alphabets are disjoint and we define their union as now sigma. And we define strings on this alphabet sigma, which are called p strings. And instead of speaking of characters, we call any element of sigma a symbol. And with sigma, we small sigma, we define the size of this alphabet. In the following examples, we keep small characters for static symbols and capital letters for the parameterized symbols. So this gives kind of these strings we can deform. So for the matching, we defined a so-called p-match as follows. Given two p-strings, we say they match if first they match with respect to the static characters, and second, we can find a bijection, which we call here psi, on the parameterized symbols, such that we can match each parameterized symbol of V to U. Here is an example where, for instance, we match each A to C. Like here we have an A, so it matches to C. Here we have an A, so it has to match with C. And if you do that for B and C as well, and you see that this is a bijection which maps all characters of V to U, then you can say, oh, U and V P match. Now you can define the parameterized pattern matching, where you have given, a, again, the text in the pattern, but now an occurrence corresponds to a substring of the text that P matches the pattern. And using that definition, we can, again, ask, count all these occurrences, and we will also write t count p. And the goal is again to index the text. So here we have ba, and this is an occurrence of ca, because you find a bijection from b to c and a to a. Note that for each occurrence you can define your own new bijection. This makes this problem not trivial, and but fortunately there are indices for this matching problem, the PPM problem, originally defined by Baker, who defined also this kind of adapted the suffix tree for that problem. And there are other data structures with different time bounds, but they all take um, time based on the pattern lengths and logarithmic, logarithmic time on the alphabet size or lo even linear time for the number of parameterized symbols. But they all need n log n bits of space, which we don't want to use. So therefore we use here another data structure called the parameterized Boris Wheeler transform, which takes space linear in the number of bits of the input, which is very appealing. And the query can be answered in m log sigma time, which is also kind of what the other data structures kind of do. Here we look at the simplified version, which unfortunately takes double the space, but it's very succinct in the definition and easy to extend, and therefore we look at that version. Now, but the question now is first, what are the applications for PPM, and why do we want to extend? 
So the first uh, application was given by Baker for software maintenance where I have blocks of the same code basically but different variables. So you can use PPM to match them or to find these kind of blocks. Which also kind of can be adapted for plagiarism detection and for analyzing genetic data, where for instance you have RNA based pairs and you want to kind of think about whether the X and Y match, you can define this Psi function and say, oh, X and Y actually match because you can use this Psi to ma map X to Y. But for RNA structures, you often have them in cyclic form, so you don't know where it's the start and the end are. So this mapping this this uh, problem becomes basically kind of that shape and you still want to do the p-match so this gives you a rise to a new kind of problem which we call circular parameterized pattern matching because we think now about the string as cyclic so the text you want to index and we actually extend that problem even further that you don't want to index one string but many strings you have a text collection of d texts and you do have a pattern and now the occurrence corresponds to any uh, substring of any of these texts which p-match with the pattern but these substrings can be cyclic and then uh, the problem basically boils down to the same notation and we also want to index uh, this, this, this text collection so here you have a p-match for cc, if you just wrap around because you have here an a and here an a. More elaborated example is that where you have ba and you have this text collection. So you can linearize it, you have some spaces in between. And you can see that you have here a c which maps to ba, so this is a match. Or here b and you wrap around and you have here a mapped to a, so this is also a match. Here again, a wrapped around match, or you even don't have to wrap around to find here is these two matches. So you have to get a count five. This doesn't look non-trivial, but actually there is a straightforward solution. You just take, let's say you just have one string you want to index, and you just doesn't take, you don't take just one, the string itself, but uh, the concatenation, the concatenation with itself. So this gives you t, t to index. Now you search in tt t the pattern. And for instance, uh, you have the pattern BAA. And you find the pattern even at the border of ABBA here. Because you have the second occurrence of t here. So you find actually at the border where you would wrap around the second p. But the not nice part is that you also get pseudo results which just map at the second half. And we, you have to do a post-processing. We don't want to follow this simple idea because first it increases the space by doubling, which is okay if you look at um, these data structures just take order of n log n bits, but not for the PBWT. And second, we want to index multiple strings. So we want to extend the PBWT like the extended BWT for the classic BWT. And for that, we just briefly review the PBWT based on two different encodings, the pref encoding and the Hashimoto encoding, which we coined just because it was defined two years ago by Hashimoto et al. So we look at the simplified PWT. And for that, we look at the techniques used for the BWT, where you sort, you index the last character of all cyclic rotations sorted in lexicographic order. And then the query you want to answer, you can answer it by just reporting the length of the obtained range you get from the backward search. But the question is, how can you do that with respect to the p-matching problem? Because if you just take a p-string and sort cyclic rotations, you end up with this rotation matrix and you can see that AABB matches with BBAA, but if you look at the matrix, they are far apart, they are actually opposite. So th this doesn't give you the range you want. Luckily, if you encode your string with the pref encoding, which is in this uh, bracket, 
then it actually holds that these strings glue together. And the idea is that you take, um, you encode the P symbols as follows, that the leftmost occurrences are replaced by infinity, and all other occurrences of P symbols, like this A, just by the distance to the previous one. Like here, you have a distance of 2, or for C, the distance is 3 to the next previous C. The nice thing is that if you have two strings with the same pref encoding, this means already that they p match. So you just have to compute the, p, uh, the pref encoding for doing the p matching stuff. Unfortunately, it's unstable under rotation, meaning it doesn't commute with the uh, uh, rotation operation. So if you commute, uh, if you rotate in the pref encoding up there, you get this one if you just rotate by left by one. But if you rotate first the text by one, and then compute upon that the pref encoding, the second A becomes the first A, and this gives you infinity, which is not two anymore. So this doesn't work because you need this property for defining the L and the F array for the BWT. So you want that property. And this property is given by the Hashimoto encoding, where instead of the pref encoding, what you do for such a P symbol is that you look to the right until the next same P symbol appears, like here, two A's. And you look in between the number of different P symbols, which is just C, and therefore AC becomes two. If you have, uh, for instance, here A, and the next A is here, but in between there are just S symbols, so uh, for A we just write one. And in this encoding we think about the string as cyclic, so this A becomes one because the next A is here and there is nothing between, so it's again just one. And again, if both strings have the same Hashimoto encoding, then they p-match. And if you think about the rotations, you can either rotate and compute the Hashimoto encoding, or you compute the Hashimoto encoding and then rotate. So it's commutative. And this gives you rise to the following definition of the parameterized BWT, where you take the Hashimoto encoded string and you sort all cyclic rotations of this string in with respect to the pref encoding. So you get this cyclic rotation matrix, but you can see that they are not sorted with respect to the Hashimoto encoding, but with respect to the pref encodings. And then you take the first and the last column, which gives you the F and the L array, and then you're done. And it works because, as noted in this paper from Isari et al., that the pref encoding basically <coughs> keeps the succeeding context intact, and therefore you can do the, the backward search. But what you actually want to show is that the LF mapping works. So again, what is the LF mapping? Um, you define the LF mapping on F and L such that if you take the ice occurrence of a symbol X in L, then you want to map it to the ice occurrence of X in F. And to see that it works, what you want to have that if you take the ranks of the symbols in text order, meaning like here we have written in subscript in, in red color the text ranks of each symbol, like this is the first two, this is the second two, and the third two, and so on, that you want that xk of L gets mapped to xk of F by the LF mapping. And you can see here, it's, you take, for instance, the first two, which has rank 3, and it maps to the first two of F, and it has again rank 3. And if you show that this holds, then, well, the backward search works, and you get the range you want to report. Nice. So, what we want to do now is, you want to take that idea and put it to um, to the extension which we call EPBWT. 
And the main idea is here that we change the order in which we want to sort. Instead of the lexicographic order, we take the omega order. So for standard strings, what does it mean? We use in superscript an omega for taking the infinite iteration of the string. And with root, we define the primitive root of the string. Like if the, root, if the string is just repetition of AB, then the root is just AB, which is primitive. Now, given two strings, we first check whether their roots are equal. And if they're equal, they're also equal in the omega order. Otherwise, we find up to a position i a mismatching character pair, which tells us whether v or u is smaller. Now, we can extend the omega order for standard strings to p strings, just first computing the Hashimoto encoding and check whether the roots are equal. And then they're also equal in the omega order. Otherwise, we find a mismatching character pair at position i plus 1, and which tells us which is smaller. And actually, we already used that uh, ordering for the PBWT. It coincides with the lexicographic order of the prefix words conjugates. Uh, here is an example where it doesn't coincide because we have strings of different lengths. You can see that in the prefix coded version, they are all prefixed, so t1 is smaller than t2 and smaller than t3. But in the omega order, we, are, we just count up to position 8. We have here a mismatching column, which translates here to a mismatching column which tells you that uh, t2 is smaller than t1 in the omega order, but actually t1 and t3 are equal because uh, the root is just 2. And they have the same root. So what we do now is we take all our strings, uh, we take their conjugates, we take the Hashimoto encoded version of them, and we sort these by the pref encoding, but with the omega order. This is the main new idea, basically. And you get, again, here an uh, F and an L column, where the L column is basically the last letter of each conjugate. You do the same, so you want to build uh, the LF mapping like you did previously, but now, again, we use in subscript the text ranks, and we linearize the input text to one single one for the ranks. So we continue with the rank counting for the second uh, text for two. It's not, not starting by one, but, but by three, four, and so on. And then you can do the same, like for F and L, you count where the ranks are. And then you want to check whether the LF mapping holds. And interestingly, interestingly it doesn't hold. So, for instance, here uh, you have the second one in L, you map it to the second one in F, but it has here text rank 3, but here in F text rank 2. So why doesn't it hold? It doesn't hold because the index texts are not primitive. But wait, they should be primitive because AC is primitive, but actually you index the Hashimoto encoded text. So what we index is 2, 2, which is of obviously not primitive. We have seen the root is 2. So what you want to do now is you don't want to index uh, the string itself, but the Hashimoto encoded roots. And you take a, a little bit of counting how long this string was before. And this gives you actually the EPBWT for the CPPM pattern matching problem. It builds on the ideas of the PBWT and from the EBWT for the extended version of the BWT. It uses the same space as the PBWT and it answers also the query in the same time as the PBWT, which I have not shown here, but you can do that. You can also reconstruct the input up to PMatch equivalence because we don't store the capital letters in um, the PBWT. We forget about that. So we don't know how to reconstruct that, but up to pmatch it's possible. And we can even construct the index in the same way as in the Isari paper, and we have applications of our ideas for other indexing data structures, for instance for Cartesian tree matching to extend these indices. So thanks for listening and any questions are welcome.